Welcome to the December the 14th, 1999 on-site visit to fire station number one in Uptown Grand Prairie as we're resuming the dedication of the fire station number one, dedicating it to our fire chief emeritus, J.C. Swadley, Jr. And we're going to have with us an illustrious group of past fire chiefs, wonderful people but to salute J.C. Swadley at this. And we want to thank Mr. Louis Tovar for being our wonderful camera person and official from AT&T that's helping us with this documentary. And we'll be right back with all of our ceremony. We're delighted now to welcome, first of all, our Honorable Mayor Charles England, and we're glad to have you with us, Mayor. Thank you, Ruthie. It's good to be here. All right. And secondly, our Fire Chief Cliff Nelson is going to be in charge of a very special ceremony today, and we thank you and our viewing audience for joining us at this very special occasion. Chief. Thank you, Ruthie. It's my pleasure to be here this afternoon, and would like to pay tribute to an individual that's responsible for a lot of lives and a lot of firefighters' lives in this city. We'd like to make some introductions in just a moment, and when we do, we will be able to go outside and look at a plaque that is on this fire station number one that was built in 1949. First of all, I'd like to say that uh, four of the five chiefs that have been a part of this city are here today, and we'd like to recognize them momentarily. As we do, we'll also allow the mayor to recognize the city council and members that are here to help support the fire department and the city departments and personnel throughout the decades. First of all, I'd like to introduce one uh, fire chief, uh, J.C. Swadley. J.C. Swadley? J.C. Swadley is our first fire chief, and he is the person we're going to pay tribute today. Thank you, Chief. Along with J.C., uh, chiefs that he has hired in, in the previous past also, uh, we'll have Bob Langford. Uh, chief Bob Langford retired. And also, Chief James Robertson retired. These are the four individuals that are responsible for the department and its leadership over the last five decades. I uh, want to pay tribute to those individuals and we'll also show a plaque momentarily outside. I'd like to introduce also now back uh, Mayor Charles England so he can recognize some of the council members. Mayor England. Thank you, Chief. Well, it is. It's good to be here today. I've never seen so many chiefs. I mean, I, I'm sure we can make a big decision uh, today, but uh, it, it's an honor for us to be here on, on this very special occasion. So a lot of the council, in fact, I believe most or all the council is here, and I'd like to introduce them, those that are here, Councilman Frank Robertson, Councilman Jim Swafford, Councilman Harry Engler, Dick Frigo, Councilman Dick Frigo, of course, Ruthie Jackson, who's also the host of this show and the Mayor Pro Tem and Councilman Jim Bledsoe. Uh, who did I miss? I got Mr. Swafford. So that's, um, is Terry Jackson here? Well, she's probably on her way. But uh, uh, thank all, all of you for being here. Uh, we've really been looking forward to, uh, number one, everybody getting to see the new station or the remodeled station. Uh, a lot of memories uh, here this station for me back when I was a volunteer and, and, uh, and I see a lot of the, the retired firemen here that uh, um, put me into a lot of fires that I wanted to kind of stay out and roll the hose and they kind of pushed me into the sometimes the burning buildings but uh, but a lot of great memories here it's, this is uh, the, and of course to be at honor Chief Swadley who was responsible for getting this uh, this building built uh, uh, and now we get to uh, have this very special day to to name it uh, in his honor. So, uh, um, Chief, what's next? Do we get? Uh, are we gonna go cut a ribbon and we're gonna take a tour around the station? And uh, I know it's been expanded some. Miss Jackson, do. <coughs> but I but I do want to say a couple words about Chief Swadley. If this if this will be the right time. Uh, of course, the Swadley family kind of got fire service started in Grand Prairie many, many years ago. It goes back to, to Chief Swadley's father, uh, uh, Jake Swadley, who, who was the first chief, I believe, in Grand Prairie. And, and uh, of course, then J.C. came on. He's the first paid chief, which is important when, he, when they started getting a paycheck. But, uh, but J.C. Swadley is, has been a, an important part of Grand Prairie's history and, and his whole, in fact, his whole family. And, and, I, and I, when the chief 
I, I got to tell you, Chief, I, I really wasn't for remodeling this station. I, I really thought uh, I really wanted to tear it down and build a new one, but I lost. Well, and, no, and that's. Uh, history, but uh, right? Chief uh, Chief Nelson has thought the, the right thing to do was to remodel uh, Central Fire Station, and it is a landmark, and, uh, and it does preserve a lot of Grand Prix history. And I'm glad we did that. And um, I'm going to come over when it rains hard, and make sure it doesn't leak. <laughs> but but uh, after we got the after we got the station remodeled, we you know we thought that, that the the right thing to do and and to help preserve Grand Prix history uh, is to name this station uh, in honor of the person that that was responsible for getting it built. And and uh, of course that that's you. And not only I guarantee you, he's he doesn't get a paycheck uh, as a paid chief anymore as a retired chief, but. He keeps all the retired firemen together, and he's still very active in the in fire service, and in, in not only in Grand Prairie but in the state. And he's he's well known throughout the state, and it's just a, an honor, Chief, uh, to be able to, to, to do this in in, in, in in your honor. So let me, uh, your it's your day, and it, it's your station now. So I'm going to turn the microphone over to you and let you say whatever you want to. Appreciate it. Okay. Thanks a lot. This is a great thing. I appreciate the city government and all my friends for this honor. And I was thinking of a few things in this millennium that would be something to think about. In 1917, in June, my father and two other men invited some citizens to meet with them at the depot, a cotton platform, and they had 12 citizens that signed up to be volunteer farmers. That was 1917. I was, well, going on four years old. And so in 1918, the city of Grand Prairie put in its water system. And installing that water system, <coughs> they put in 37 fire hydrants, two-way type, on a four-inch water main. That was their first water system, and the commissioners bought a thousand feet of two and a half inch single jacket hose, an ax, and a bar. They didn't have anything to carry it on, but one of the, the food stores, grocery stores, had a truck that they used for a fire, and they finally scrounged around, and two men came up and, and uh, made, the, or made it or, or fixed a Model T truck, a solid tar that they could use to carry that fire hose. So in 1918, they had a, a, a system then. Of course, it was buckets back in 1700 because we had two or three gins, and they were grateful for those men uh, to help them with any kind of a disaster. So there was one thing that I, I had thought about and stuck in my mind. <laughs> when, when I was 12 years old in school, that was 1923, we had a two-story school building on 200 block on college, and the, the Grade six was on the second floor on the east side of the building, and I saw some smoke on North Street that they was having a house fire, and I left our school, I cut out and went across the pasture to that fire, but when I got back, our superintendent reprimanded me with five licks of pecan sprout, and I didn't... <laughs> I said, I'll be a fireman from now on. But I said, I was really proud. I didn't say anything to my mother or dad about that, but I was, it was all right. I took it fine. But I'd like to say that our department is 82 years old, as you know. We had good times and we had sad times. And, and, uh, <clears throat> Mm -hmm. I got to look at my date. Oh yeah, in 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 uh, 1948, we had a house fire on Small Street in the 1400 block. And when we got there, 
the attic was fully involved. So the men were going to make an attack by pulling down some ceiling, and they did, and part of the ceiling had fallen on them, and one man, my cousin, Casey Swadley, he happened to get hit with it, but it, it didn't really carry him out at that time, but he passed away with a heart attack at that fire. Uh, we were all sorry. There was five Swadleys in the fire department. And then we had another little instance. Our Lieutenant Ennis Davy, a 30-year veteran with us, answered a fire here on, on West Main Street in a filling station. And in the filling station, they had used one of the bays to paint cars in. And it was pretty well involved. And Ennis was there working the line. And the gas tank had an explosion on it and burnt Ennis about a second degree burn. But those were the two things in 82 years that happened during an incident we were working on. But the rest of the time was, was wonderful. Uh, Oh, they, in, in 1999, they bought an American France fire truck. Now, this truck was manufactured in Elmire, New York, and it was a hose and chemical truck, and it was on a Model T chassis. Well, in 1920, it was in a garage on East Main in the 300, or West Main, now Mr. Cook's garage would store that truck for them. The garage burnt one night and the fire truck burnt with it. Uh, I've often heard them say that my father tried to get that fire truck, but they wouldn't stand for him to go into the building and try to get it out. And so when I, I was about nine years old, they bought another Model T fire truck from American plants, and they stored it in, on East Main in my dad's building garage that he had. But it, it was, yeah, that was about it, but I uh, had a card that I was looking at today of two trucks and some men in 1924, these two trucks placed, took place of the Model T fire truck that they had in this, place, in this station. And that was a, a 23 model and a 24 model Rio speed wagon. So we have come a long ways and it's been great. And this is a great millennium. And I hope that we have this in the 2000s to everyone, and I sure thank everyone for coming, and I appreciate you. Even my Sunday school teacher is here, <laughs> Mr. Mr. Newberry, and thank you, Bill. I, I, I appreciate it, and appreciate everyone. I still enjoy going around and seeing my friend Fireman, even though I'm 86 years old. So I sure do thank you a lot. Thank you, Chief. Thank you. We do appreciate everyone being here. <laughs> Just a quick recap. I've known J.C. Swally now for almost a quarter of a century and have become very close friends with him over the last decade. And he still travels with me and some of the other assistant chiefs to Dallas County and North Central Texas Fire Chiefs meetings. So he still stays in, stays in touch with what is going on in the fire service today. I do want to thank our city manager's office, Tom Hart and Don Wilson, for being here today and helping support us throughout not only the last few weeks and months and years, but today and in the future also. We appreciate your support very much along with the council. And I do appreciate the hospitality that B-Shift, Captain Vermillion, and Lieutenant Murphy have provided for us today. 
And as you make your way around the doorway that has the exit light above it, outside there was an original plaque in 1949 when this building was open for service, 50 years ago. Below that plaque is a new gold plaque with red lettering naming this uh, J.C. Swadley Jr. Central Fire Station 1999, 50 years after the original opening of this station. So we do want to thank you and Ruthie for your opportunity to be on your program. Do you want to have the mic back? Okay, we do appreciate you being here. Please visit with some of the members of the department, the retirees and some of those that are here today. Make your way around to say hello to J.C. and the other retired chiefs. We do thank you and uh, Glenn Hill and Chief Barrett for being here also for the police department. We do appreciate your support too. Thank you and uh, enjoy the afternoon. Now, uh, I know that the fire department had to be very important then with volunteers because before we had a fire chief, it all depended on that. JC, would you like to tell us a little bit about that? And especially, let's get to this 1905 fire, shall we? I sure will. That was quite interesting for the community to, to meet that early one morning about 5 o'clock uh, at Texas Depot caught a fire caused from a pot coal stove. All right. And the, everybody had buckets, brigades, helped on that. It burnt a lumber yard, a hotel, a restaurant, uh, I believe a doctor's office, Dr. Payne's office, and then and several little buildings. But at noon, the wind uh, came up from the south. It was already burning, blowing from the south, but it, it got a little stronger. And the community asked Dallas to send a fire truck and some men to help uh, put out the embers. That's the coals that were still burning. And this has always been amazing to know that they put a fire truck and some firemen on a railroad car and a train brought the fire part from fire trucks from Dallas to help extinguish the embers uh, two hours later after they called them, which was really nice for Dallas yes. to do that. Yeah, and how they get it done. Yeah. And it came on a railroad, railroad flatbed. Railroad flatbed car. It oh. sure did, with the fire truck and firemen. All right, now tell me uh, when you said uh, the fire started at the depot right. and the wind was from the south, does right. that mean that everything at the 100 block East Main uh, on the south side of the street uh, practically, was practically extinct. everything? It sure did. All it, right. It was the biggest part, it was about 400 population at that time. Okay. But it did uh, that destroy most of the city. All right, and that was a hotel? A, a, a lumber yard, a restaurant, uh, a doc, I believe it was Dr. Payne's office. There were some other structures had some damage to them. Uh -huh. But with the effort of the community, with their buckets brigade, they uh, held off the 
fires that would uh, cover the rest of the town. And all of this was at about 5 o'clock in the morning? 5 o'clock in the morning it started. And of course, this is what Exposure. actually started the, uh, the fire department, wasn't it? Because they had the Buckets Brigade they had before. The bucket, they had the Bucket Brigade, and you know, I, I admire this. We had uh, three, two cotton gins in town, and one of the ginners bought the buckets for it, yeah, and they had to furnish for the men and uh -huh. for the people of, of the mm -hmm. city. Uh, it was really, it was really interesting. Well, where did they get their water, J.C., to they fight this well fire? They had well water, well water, and they had troughs that the stock ranked out of. Out in the center of the uh, of, uh, of uh, Main uh, Street uh, and Center Street. Main Street, there was a. Truck. And that's where they got their water they from had, there. They sure did. They we did. have a picture of that old watering trough that is there yeah. uh, on North Center Street. That's right. Well, You're that right, is very Mr. exciting. I, I had not thought of that, but I wondered where they got they, their water. They, they, it was from the wells and, mm -hmm. and the. Well, you know, there are some pictures of showing where the, the stock was kept behind the, uh, just west of the depot. That's right. Behind the west block of 100 Main, you know, that showed the uh -huh. cattle. Yes. You know those pictures. Where Marie's shop. shop and all right. of that's located right. in there. That stock pen. Uh -huh. The farmers, <laughs> they, they used to bring their cattle, their calves, to the stockyard, and they had a dipping vat that they dipped and they'd, they'd run those cattle through. And I remember the dipping vat. Do you really? It was really something. I, I had a, but the fire department was very, very active. They had, 1917, they met on the, the railroad. We had a platform for the cotton up that they would bring in and load it on the train. And they had 12 men in the community uh, get, uh, made uh, members of the department. It was 12 to start with. How wonderful. They, they so sure the, did. That was your first volunteer fire department was, was the first. 12 persons. And, and, and we had no uh, fire trucks. They just had the buckets and what they could do. But they did try and help to save the town for any fire. Mm -hmm. and did you have any kind of wagons, like a mule they, and a wagon? They, or? they had, this was really interesting. They were very uh, interesting to have some other. They had a grocery store in town at Hall Brothers, and the city bought a thousand feet of fire hose, and whenever they they didn't have any water until 1918. We uh -huh. had no water system until 1918. And we had 37 fire hydrants. And the city bought this fire hose and they used the truck with the grocery store used. Whenever there's a fire, they load oh, that hose on it and take no. it to them. I heard that. And of course, by 1919, they bought the first fire truck. That was a Model T built by American La France. And Mr. Cook had a garage that was on East West Main that would was cross the Main Street at that time. They had a, a little crook in the main, main Street around this building, and they stored that in there. And sure enough, it caught a fire one night. And I was told I heard the story that my dad tried to get in this building and get that fire truck out. He was very anxious and the people wouldn't let him because it was, it had a gasoline truck in there with 500 gallons of gasoline in it and it had about 20 some odd automobiles. But they wouldn't let him go in it so they lost their first fire truck. <laughs> and uh, the city bought another Model T right after that, about 1920. And they started off with this one fire truck with this fire hose, this, this carried fire hose for it. But uh, from then on, they they progressed a whole lot. The uh, town began to grow, and uh, they about 500 or 600 people, uh, citizens here. And they they bought that truck and then later bought two more fire trucks. But they didn't have a place to store the fire trucks because Mr. 
Cook's garage burnt down. So my dad had a building, a garage building on East Main. And he uh, told the city that he would, it's 1921, that he would fix a place for to store the trucks in there. And he had a 24-hour service, which was helpful for the city. They had somebody there at night. They had a general alarm to notify the men. And uh, it, he housed and, and took care of the fire trucks till 1949 when the city built their own fire station. Yeah. And right now we have eight, and I'm so proud that we're going to get number nine. Right, station. right. And number nine's nine coming station. online, isn't sure, it? Sure, I'm proud of that. We have one more minute on this 15-minute segment. We may have to run this 30 minutes <laughs> <laughs> because we're not going to be able to get to, uh, uh, to Charles Billy Powers so, uh, to tell about... I just want to hear J.C. <laughs> Is there anything else that we need to tell about this, uh, Mr. Powers? Do you have any other data that well, we need to add to this documentary? Well, I have this little photocopy we were looking at a while ago showing uh, his dad, Uncle Jake's fire station, or garage. service station yeah. garage. Yeah. And this, uh, well, he we probably dated this, but this was built in 1924. And it was interesting to see on here that it was purchased from the First Baptist Church. Right. And, and, the, and the first, the first now it's going back yeah, to the First Baptist Church. Church, and the building has been raised, hadn't it? Right, right. right. And I saved some tiles from it and, knew, and brought them to I J.C. Yes, had to go down and dig in the rubble and get she some sure tiles. Did, <laughs> well, uh, I want to thank you all for bringing us up to date, and we'll have to save this spotlight on um, the fire department and, and bring you back and, and let you have equal time. How does oh, that sound, no, Charles I, Billy? I always yeah. like to hear J.C. <laughs> Talk okay. about it. All right. Thank you all so very much for staying with us today and, and spotlighting oh, you're that. Sure well.